a concourse, and if it's not a concourse, what is your your, your driving? Group? Actually, we talked about this a few minutes ago. Over here. I think for all of our guests here, you appreciate the fact that this is the 1970 Lancia Stratos HF Zero concept car. And it's at the Art Center Car Classic, and make sure that they can see things, and you even can see on the field some combinations. I mean, look, look around there; they're pairing these up. This is really exciting for us. This is the Shop and Jail one. Uh, four videos of prototype that in 2004. And we were really excited to pull the power of the GT. And they were the wonderful car that they did with the GT. But it's been a massive following for the Jet Number One, and uh, I've been working for about the uh, last eight years to get the license to build the car and bring it to Asia. And uh, it came to me three years ago, and now it's going to be only in the production. And in just a year, the latest car from Superfund has done two new copies of the car, and they're selling really well. So this is a true continuation of the car. These time, and excuse me for my lack of what is it? but I've heard you can get a aluminum body or a fiberglass body, or is it one or the other? It's such a fault that somebody in the past, if you look at the evolution of car design, you know, 69 Camaro or 67, 89 Camaro look completely different from the 1970. You know what I'm saying? Camaro, Cuba, Challenger, whatever it's going to be, they would leave whatever platform was there and create something completely new. And I said, the two cars that have the best evolution of them, that design has evolved. It just got better and better and better. There's some great ones in the past. And the other one is the Corvette. You can look at the Corvette and follow it through its lineage and its evolution. And I said, we have an opportunity now to draw from the past a human product. That is amazing. Where is that coming from? If you just, if you're like me, you're a multi-generation car person. My mom worked in the car industry. Your dad. Yes. What was the moment that you realized? And don't tell me when you were, you know, TV on that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the moment you realized? Ah, uh, designing car. Like I gotta be in this business. Alex Chambers. We designed the Tucker over for Auburn and Alex Chambers showed me a few things, and also. Was, Uh, he showed me how to draw an ellipse and how to make a wheel look like it's turned out and how proportion looks. So, you know, when typically as a kid is drawing a car and you're trying to draw a wheel that looks like it's turned, you always make those ovals straight up and down. It's when you realize that the major and minor axis line it works like it's an axle point it goes to, all of a sudden that wheel looks like it fits on the car. And you were seven. I was seven when I was showing the other ones. Wow, that's 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 what was, what was your favorite car? Well, if you remember the turbine powered uh, Indy cars that Andy Granatelli did, my father is the one that painted those cars before they raced. And Hot Wheels came out with the design of the Indy cars in my pocket. You know, you know what I wonder about the, the, the practicality? Half years worked with them, and I wanted to come back and graduate. When I did my senior show, I also showed some of the work that we had done at. Asha Corporation, which was Sternberg Plane, and ended up with all of these different contacts. And we ended up doing work for about 14 different companies. Jeff Drew. And that's what it's all about. It's not based on what year the car is, but it's 
how passionate they are about these cars. And these cars become family members. It becomes a part of the, I'm never gonna sell it, or some of them have been sold, and I get asked all the time, are you upset if they sell their car? And I say, well, if they sold their car and they, that gave them the money to buy it. Future and automotive. Talk to that person. What advice would you give that student at Art Center right now about the future? Well, obviously, to uh, pay attention to the details and to follow your heart. Make decisions based on the passion that you have for the project. Never make a decision based on money. Make it because it's right for your passion. Your wife has to make decisions based on financial. So we argue and go back and forth on that. But uh, generally, if it's about the money that you right. take to put into a project, I won't go in and work late hours at night, and I don't right. charge for my time. I only charge for yes. the So the projects that I'm doing, I'm putting that extra percentage in there to make it that much better. Because I don't want to sell it. What's that? Okay. So I'm trying to drive down here and visit Boyd. She would give me the projects that we back home. I did that for almost three years, and I never gave him a single bill. It was just my passion and my hobby. But when I ended up leaving the Asha Corporation, I went to work full time for Boyd. I believe if I hadn't done the work that I had done for Boyd the way that I did it, I probably would have never been offered a full time job. And it was the greatest job I've ever had. But, uh, even to this day, you know, I have my own shop now. It's my name. Well, before, you know, we had a much bigger budget first. We had about $120,000. Secrets that maybe it was a while ago that you were here. When you see young students today, uh, when you come back to the school, what do you tell the young students? Some things have changed to this, isn't it? There is. This is the Master Martin Color, the first DBS that came to New York with this color. All right, let me talk. Hey, you might have the most elaborate computer program in the world, but nothing beats. Thank you so much.